Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, this one is part 16. Packing the piston rod glands with Teflon coated yarn and experimenting with the slide valve. In the last episode I removed the cylinder covers and two out of the three of them had gaskets. And because of that I'm not going to remove the lower cylinder covers. I will presume there are gaskets in there. When I get the engine back together and run it on steam I will soon find out. Now it's time to pack the piston rod glands, and it's much easier doing it this way than when the cylinders are mounted into the engine's frame. The six support columns, the connecting rods and the valve gear really get in the way of doing this job. It's fiddly enough doing the job on the bench. The top part of this gland is a very firm fit on the studs, but with the help of a couple of small screwdrivers, the bigger one being the better one, as you can clearly see in this clip I can now move the top of the gland out of the way. Once upon a time I used to use graphited yarn, but the formulation and standard of manufacture has changed so much, I now use Teflon coated yarn, and even though it's white in colour, it actually feels very much like the old stuff. Normally I would wrap the graphited yarn or Teflon coated yarn around the piston rod, then carefully push the coil of yarn down into the gland. This Teflon coated yarn though is a bit springier than the old graphited yarn, so I ended up poking it into the gland one loop at a time. It doesn't matter really as the end result is exactly the same whichever way you approach the job. Once I've packed the gland with the Teflon coated yarn I replace the top part of the gland and now I need to tighten the nuts that hold it in place. A quick word of advice here, it's very important to make sure that the gland is level when it's tightened in place and it's also a good idea not to over tighten these nuts and shear off the studs. You have to learn to develop the skills for working on things of this size. It is a much gentler procedure than you would find on a full size engine, whether it be an internal combustion engine or a steam engine. Most of the fixings on this engine that hold cylinder covers in place, glands in place and quite a lot of other parts are only 7BA. Even though they do the job and they're perfectly strong enough, if you try and over tighten them they will often break. Over the years I've bought quite a lot of steam engines from the auction site that we all know and love. You win a few and you lose a few. I once bought a boiler and it was so bad and so dangerous I just used a bandsaw to chop it up. And unsurprisingly quite a lot of the steam engines that I've bought in the past have had sheared bolts, leaving what was left of the bolts conveniently super glued into the holes. So far in this engine I've only found one sheared bolt and the bolt sheared when I was trying to remove it. You're currently watching me finishing the job of packing the other gland. I didn't see any point in just repeating the process in its entirety. If you're not sure how to do it by now, please rewind and watch me packing the first one. In this clip I'm checking the tightness of the nuts that hold the cylinder covers to the block. I'm pleased to say that they are just right. None of them are snapping off as I'm tightening them, and none of them are glued into the holes. In this clip you can see that there is a stud missing, but this was never fitted in the first place. I need to drill and tap some holes in the main cylinder casting to fit the drain cocks. And the last thing I want to do is to have the drill collide with the stud in there and snap off in the hole. Once the holes for the drain cocks are all completed, I will fit some special short studs to make it look okay. This is only a problem on the intermediate cylinder. On the high and low pressure cylinders this is not a problem. On the high pressure cylinder casting the gland assembly for the intermediate cylinder is made as a separate unit and it's bolted to the cylinder casting. I'm not happy with the slide valve that I made for the intermediate cylinder for two reasons. The first reason being that when I machined the casting I did not have an end mill which was 5.30 seconds in diameter. I used what I had just to make the video and the slots came out at 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, the smallest end mill that I had. The other problem is, if you have a look at the width of the slots on the casting, and the width of the valve, there isn't much metal at each end of the slot to cover the port face. The height and width of the valve is as per drawing. Three quarters of an inch wide, as shown here, the camera angle makes it look a bit wrong, but trust me, it's three quarters of an inch wide. And five eighths from top to bottom. The 5 8 dimension is fine, there's nothing wrong with that, and the recess that I machined in the face of the valve is perfectly fine. I worked out that the slide valve can actually be made a bit wider. 
The width of the steam chest is 7 eighths of an inch. And OK, I'm splitting hairs a bit, it's only an eighth of an inch bigger than the slide valve I made, which is 3 quarters of an inch. Which means I can add approximately a sixteenth at each side of the valve. To show this principle, first of all I degreased the valve using some panel wipe. And here you can see the amount of clearance I have to play with between the casting and the valve. I silver soldered two small pieces of brass, one to each side of the slide valve, and here I'm cleaning it up after the soldering process. You get the idea. There's still a little bit of clearance which you need, and now the slide valve measures 5 eighths by 7 eighths of an inch. This valve would work perfectly well. With the valve now being 7 eighths of an inch wide, it still fits in my brass pieces. Sorry, I mean my custom made valve setting jig. I am, however, not going to use this valve, I'm going to make a new one. I have some blocks of cast gun metal, and it just so happens that one of them is the perfect size to machine a brand new valve, to the new dimensions of course. I'll be showing that in a future episode. I mean I could use this valve, but no, I'd always be aware that it wasn't right. This valve will be very carefully placed in my box of old slide valves, of which this will be the first in the box. That's it for this episode. All that's left to say is stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.